everyone, you are joining me, Tom, back here today on the Jurassic Collectibles YouTube channel for another look at a LEGO Jurassic World The Legend of Isla Nublar set. So today we are taking a look at 75935 Baryonyx Face Off The Treasure Hunt. Now if we zoom in to take a look at some of the features here, uh, you can see first we have got this really nice two-tone green Jeep. Reminds me of some of the gatherers vehicles from uh, Jurassic Park The Lost World. We have got an alternate version of Danny Neddermeyer. We have got a beautiful brand new uh, Lego Baryonyx that uses the Indoraptor body. We have got a trailer and we have got a water feature with Sinjin Prescott, a character from the show back there. So we have got our usual Lego Jurassic World branding. We've got Owen and Blue up there. Um, if I bring the box in a little bit closer, you can see, we'll bump that up for you guys, that we have got the cast of main characters and the Baryonyx. So the Owen and Claire here are repacks as far as I'm aware from the Fallen Kingdom line, but the other two minifigures are brand new. Um, if I just angle that down, there you can get a better look at the Baryonyx, the characters. Nice to see Sinjin with an alternate hairpiece and Danny. Uh, looking at the sides of the box, again we have got that really, really nice branding where we've got the claw marks, which looks absolutely fantastic. Whoever did the graphics for those has done a really nice job of making them look three-dimensional. Uh, if we twist it around to the other side, turn it back over, you can see... Again, the side of the box with the same photo as the front and the name in different languages. And if we then look at the back of the box, you can get a better idea, once we do this, of some of the play features included in the set. So obviously, the <laughs> Baryonyx eating fish there, um, and lots of different play features incorporated in the set as well. So if we zoom it back out, and twist this thing around. We are going to get straight into looking at the Lego Baryonyx face off because I'm really, really excited to take a look at this brand new dinosaur. Okay, guys, so here we have got the Baryonyx face off out of the packaging. As you can see, we've got a trailer, we have got a small terrain piece, a Jeep, the Baryonyx itself and the minifigures, so we will start with the smallest build which is the trailer here and work our way up to the Jeep here which is the bulk of the build in this set. So without any further ado, let's get straight into looking at that trailer. Okay, so here we've got Danny Neddermeyer's trailer and the first thing you're probably going to notice with this one, it is very high off of the ground. That is it compared to the Danny minifigure. You can see it is very high up. It's going to be a struggle for him to get up there, no doubt. Um, but it is definitely an interesting scale. You know, it's not massive, um, but there is a fair bit going on inside. So in terms of the exterior first, we've got that really nice detailing on the door there. As you can see, also on the, um, the wall there with the claw marks. I'm just going to angle us to the side slightly so that we can get a little bit of a more level look at this thing because uh, I'm quite conscious that doesn't appear to be level there we go that's a little bit better um, so as you can see again as I'm saying the claw details you've got windows here a bar piece here on the front of the vehicle we have got this great detail here with um, what looks to be like bars and things coming off on the other side Again, another window and the other details. Um, then on this side, we have got the tow hitch for the trailer, as well as the legs down here. And the legs can just be folded up and flicked away for when you want this to be towed. So obviously we're not going to do that just yet, so I'll stand it back up. Um, and then on the roof of the trailer, we've got some interesting details. You can see we've got a little almost trailer piece here. And um, some vegetation, a uh, satellite here, if I twist this around, there we go, you can see that. And then also a very, very nice awning there. Okay, so that's kind of the exterior detailing of the trailer. And to open it, we simply grab it here, 
and fold it open. Okay, so first of all, looking at this piece we've opened up, you can see here a really nice little camera build. Uh, this piece here is actually printed and we do see Danny running with it on the box so I'm going to assume that it's part of the plot. The door does also open separately so you can have minifigures access in here as opposed to just you as a big fig. Um, and down here we do have a pan for Danny and then coming over and looking at the inside of Danny's room itself. I just want to focus on that computer screen. You can see that Danny is, just like Dennis, playing solitaire, which is a really, really nice touch. Um, and we also have a bed for the character. And that piece on the end there does allow you to just slot him in like so. So he fits in really well. There is a little printed keyboard here you can't really see with the shadow. And also a red mug there. And then this little piece here is what um, the opening bracket clips into. So once you bring it back around, it clips in place and isn't going to fly open. So overall, a nice little trailer. Um, obviously not the main focus of this set, but by all means a very, very interesting build nonetheless. Um, and it's certainly got some quirky character traits for Danny inside for sure. Okay, and then next up we've got almost this little nest area for the baryonics. You can see it is a bit of a small area when we bring the Baryonyx in for scale, um, but it is still, you know, fairly suitable for that creature. So we have got a single palm tree up here with those palm fronds. We then come down and underneath this water fountain here, we have got a single fish just clipped in there, but to give the illusion of it moving around. Same as we come down here, another fish, some more vegetation, and the main play feature here is this idea that upon hitting here, we reveal a treasure chest. Now when we take a look inside that chest, I'm just going to clip it open and focus on it. You can see there are lots of different gems inside, some gold coins and some other materials as well. So that's really that. Um, it can be a bit hard to open and shut that, so we're just going to leave it how it is. And looking at it from the back as well. You can see some kind of rock detailing, but really this thing is designed to be displayed from the front, uh, like so. Now there isn't much in the way of space here, but you could potentially fit a couple of characters here and there if you wanted to. Um, and maybe create some kind of cool dynamic with them squaring off against the baryonics. So that is the small piece of terrain that's included in this set. And now we are going to go ahead and take a look at the Jeep. Okay, and then here we've got the Jeep. You can see it from the front. We have got, uh, if we zoom in and refocus a little bit, some really nice details, lots of lighting, this roll bar piece, the license plate. And a really nice thing that Lego have done here, actually, is that this piece here with the Jurassic World logo on, can open up to reveal almost some engine detailing of such. So you can get a character such as Owen to come in and repair the vehicle. Now it is very high off the ground so it will be a bit difficult for him but it's still nice that that's there. If we then zoom back out a little bit you can see lots of nice roll bar detailing across the front of the vehicle. Coming along to the sides we've really got this silver uh, almost grey bodywork with these opening doors here and an interesting note black crowbars used on the build here. You can see the interior space there. Again, two comfortable seats for characters as well as some metal grating detailing. And then coming around to the cargo bed at the back here, we have got a lamp which can be removed. And if I bring that up to the camera, we'll focus on that quickly. A minifigure can hold that, uh, and they can also hold this little fuel canister. So quite an interesting overall build for this. It has a lot of functionality in here, um, as I just put this two-piece back on quickly. Um, we will, yep, get that back in there. You can see a little silver crowbar, and overall it's just a really, really nicely built uh, little Jeep, to be honest with you. 
it's got quite a lot of nice coloration going. I really, really like the two-tone green colours here, the light green and the dark green. It has a distinct Lost World vibe to it, which is really, really nice. Uh, you've got lights up at the top, you've got roll cage detailing, uh, those opening doors, and then, of course, if we grab Owen and Claire, we should, now I haven't tried this yet, but we should be able to sit them both in here comfortably. So I'll just grab Owen as well, sit him down, and yep, as you can see, the two characters do fit in there quite comfortably, side by side, which is very, very nice. So overall, this is a really, really nice Jeep build. It's got a lot of functionality to it, a lot of detail, and um, for a Jeep which isn't actually accurate to anything as far as uh, in terms of the film canon, I do think it's a really, really nice build, and I think kids are going to love the amount of functionality that this build has got as well. And then looking at the star of this set, we have of course got the Baryonyx. Now if we zoom in and take a look at that head sculpt, you can see that this is the main new piece on this particular figure, uh, and it looks really, really nice. We've got the nice long snout, as you can see, the really, really nice yellow eye, and I like how the blue pattern has also got some blue metallic marbling in it as well. That looks great. And if we open up the jaw, you can see we'll zoom back out a little bit. That jaw does open nice and wide as well, which is great to see. And it's really got that quite distinctive shape. Now looking down through the body of the rest of the figure, we'll focus as we go. You can see again that great blue metallic speckling continues throughout. Again into the tail, and then the legs and the hands which are all in the grey. Now a big issue with this figure is it having the sickle claw here. Um, a lot of fans were annoyed about that, myself included. But that is primarily because if I bring a, another figure in for comparison, you guys can see that the Baryonyx does indeed reuse parts from the Indoraptor. So having them next to each other, you should be able to see that this figure is actually identical apart from the brand new head on the Baryonyx. Everything else here is reused, which is unfortunate. Um, mainly because some new legs would have probably made this figure a little bit better overall. But, you know, the Indoraptor was a new medium-sized theropod for Lego, uh, so it's interesting to see that they are trying to find creative ways to continue to use it, because obviously sculpts cost a lot of money. I mean, you can imagine all the time going into all of these individual assets will have cost the company a lot, so obviously they want to reuse those parts where they can. Um, that said, moving this back out the way, the Baryonyx itself is a very, very nice character, if we just refocus on it. And I am happy that we have got it in the second wave of Lego sets, because the Baryonyx and the Carnotaurus, as well as the Indoraptor, really were the standout new dinosaurs for me, so it's great to finally add this guy to the Lego Jurassic World lineup. And then looking at the Owen minifigure very quickly, because this is a repackage of the Fallen Kingdom version of Owen, you can see we've got the same cargo vest, same back printing still with no knife, same alternate facial expression, and the same overall, if I reposition him there, character. Now he does come on this occasion with a tranquilizer rifle, which we have seen plenty of times before as well. So nothing too special with Owen here. And then Claire, much like Owen, is a repackage of her Fallen Kingdom variant. So again, not too much to say here. You can see the front printing, the back torso printing, the alternate facial expression for Claire. And if we place her back, it is a nice minifigure. Again, nothing special, but a nice chance for anyone who missed out on the Fallen Kingdom sets to get their hands on this version of Claire. Okay, and then here is Danny Nedermeyer, or Nedrimeyer, however you want to say it, uh, the antagonist of the new short, uh, and also the upcoming show, Legends of Isla Nublar, and here he looks really, really cool. He's got his janitorial costume on. If we move him back a little bit and angle that up so we can look closer at that, you can see it's got some really, really nice detail to it. The Hawaiian shirt coming through, the pens, the zips, the uh, pockets, everything 
really really does shine through here and here I thought that his legs would be a reuse of the Simon Masrani minifigure from 2015 but they are in fact different which is nice to see you can see the similarities in the costumes but also the difference um, and if we twist them around the back prints again are very similar but Danny here still is different to uh, Masrani which is cool that's really nice to see actually and Danny does have an alternate terrified face, probably when the Baryonyx almost stops him from his dastardly deeds. So, uh, Danny here overall really is a cool minifigure. It's nice to get two variants of him in the line with both being different in the sets he appears in. And I will be interested to see what kind of tricks he gets up to in Legend of Isla Nublar when it releases later this year. Okay, and then lastly here we have got Sinjin Prescott, who is another brand new character coming to the cartoon short. I do wonder if his name is a little bit of um, a kind of poke fun at InGen moment, because it, you know, Sinjin, InGen, it's quite similar. Um, but I do like this minifigure. I like his detailed expedition torso, as you can see with that webbing. I really, really like the accessory he comes with here of the Isla Nublar treasure map, which is really awesome. Uh, obviously he has got that fantastic new face print which we'll take a look at in a second um, and if we take his hat off and his rucksack off which is uh, the really nice Lego rucksack piece you can see that that really nice uh, explorer style webbing continues onto the back of the figure as well and looks really really great there with the radio cable carrying all the way through so there you can see uh, a little bit of a closer look at Sinjin's face, it is a brand new face um, and I really really like the bushy beard and if you don't want him to have his hat on, Lego do include an alternate hairpiece for him which is really nice because we don't get those all the time so um, yeah Sinjin overall is a really really nice minifigure and I think that a lot of people would be able to choose the parts from this minifigure to maybe make some of the hunters from the Lost World play around with those characters so um, I'd definitely be interested to see what LEGO fans do once they get their hands on this guy. So that has been your look at LEGO 75935 Jurassic World Baryonyx Face Off The Treasure Hunt. Um, now while this is a really really cool set and I think there's a lot of nice elements here, I do think that the price on this particular set is a little bit high. So this set will be retailing for £50 here in the UK, so that's just £5 less than the trike set. And for that kind of price point, I really do think that there is not as much on offer here, if I am honest. Um, if, yeah, no, do you know what, actually, I believe, yeah, no, this is £5 more than the trike set. So for it to cost more than that set, but include less, um, I really, really don't agree with. I think it's a shame because I think the Baryonyx will be popular and obviously that head was a brand new piece, but I really can't see the logic in the pricing here where the rest of that dinosaur does just use the Indoraptor and that does affect its overall authenticity, especially when it comes to the sickle claw. Combine that with the fact that two of the characters here have been had in sets before and to be honest with you, you can definitely see that there really is not that amount of value to this set. That said, if this does go down in price, I would say maybe to around um, 45 or even, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I would say 45 um, pounds here in the UK, then I would recommend picking it up. However, I do not think it is worth the 60 pound price point. That said, I do like the Baryonyx, I do like Sinjin Prescott, he's a cool minifigure, and I do really, really like the Jeep included in this set. So if you do pick it up, I don't think you will be disappointed, I just think there are other better value LEGO Jurassic World sets on the market currently. For all that said and done though guys, you may disagree with me, you may love this set, and if you do, please do feel free to let us know in the comments below. We really do appreciate you taking the time out to watch this review, and as always guys, please like, favourite, subscribe, you know, do your thing, and as always, have a great week.